Ah, I am so happy to be back in, you know, you know my dorm, because, like, I had to leave Colorado abruptly back in September due to, you know, some personal matters that I've gotten into in my other videos, but, like, I am back on my floor in my old room, my roommate is gonna be here hopefully either tomorrow or Monday, and, like, I'm basically just picking up from where I left off. And this semester, I'm really going to set things right. Like, this is going to be the best semester yet. Yuppie is TVB, and I'm here today to make my first uh, video back in the dorms after taking my semester off. And I'm here today tonight to review a uh, like a Boss, which is a comedy starring uh, Salma Hayek, uh, Tiffany Haddish, and Rose Byrne. As Rose Byrne and Tiffany Haddish are, uh, you know, these two best friends that run a little uh, independent, like, makeup business. And Salma Hayek is this really rich and successful, like, invest, like, uh, lead uh, CEO of, like, a, uh, a bigger makeup business that wants to purchase theirs. And basically, this movie's supposed to be, like, a, a comedy between their disagreements and friendship and, you know, just basic stuff that we've seen a thousand times before. Honestly, this is the time of year. It's January. Not only do you want to see, like, the films that are, you know, nominated for Oscars, but it's also a great time for movie reviewing YouTubers like myself to just see all the terrible, like, January releases that exists solely for us to put movies on our top 10 worst movies of the respected year list at the end of every year. So yeah, that was like what I was kind of expecting going into Like a Boss. I expected it to be just, a, a, just this terrible, crappy, like, January comedy that's like a chick flick sort of thing. And walking out of it, honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, it wasn't completely boring at a few scenes, but that doesn't really excuse it, the fact that it's not a good movie. Like, this is a comedy, it's supposed to make you laugh. Or, like. There were a few scenes that succeeded in making me snicker. And people in the theaters, like, shout out to you guys, by the way, you guys know who you are. Like, people in the theaters were laughing at quite a few scenes in this movie. And if you like the humor in this movie, you like the jokes, and if the slapstick landed for you, that's great. You know, humor is personal. I get that. I have a very particular sense of humor. A lot of people aren't as difficult to please when it comes to things that make them laugh, and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you... If you, like, thought this movie was funny, and if you enjoy yourself with it, great for you. Me, not so much. There are a lot of times where I was just like, oh my, they actually just said that. Like, that just happened. That was a lot of those kind of moments. Look, I, I love Rose Byrne. She's uh, one of my favorite actresses. And Tiffany Haldish, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name right, I feel indifferent towards her, honestly. Like, I haven't really seen, like, any other movies that she's in, so I can't really, like, say for sure whether I like her or not just yet. And Salma Hayek, I don't hate her. I mean, she's she's a good actress. I've seen her in some other movies that have that been good. But honestly, like, chemistry in this movie just... I didn't really feel it here. I think they were just, again... People were sort of just phoning it in, and there's just a lot of, you know, characters that are just wooden, and, you know, the acting's a little over the top at a few scenes, and, uh, frankly, the, nothing really made, like, stuck with me. Again, there were a few funny scenes, but overall, we've seen, like, the, 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 these kind of comedies way too many times before. This film is a little too reliant on cliches, and, yeah, it just didn't really work for that reason. Overall, I'm keeping this review, like, a lot more straight to the point, because... Honestly, there isn't much to be said about, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, like a boss. Again, it's really just your typical, generic, cliche, like, disposable comedy. I mean, you know, it's not terrible by any means. Again, there, were, you'll probably enjoy this movie more than I did if you see it. But overall, I just, it didn't really work for me, guys. Like a boss, I'm giving it a 4 out of 10 stars. Uh, you know, uh, it's a good day. I moved back to my dorms. I'm ready to set things straight again with my studies. So I'm, I'm feeling a little generous today. It's a 4 out of 10 stars. It's a forgettable film. That was my first movie review of the 2020s. The new decade is here. And I finally made my first movie review for it. I saw 1917 last night. I'll make like... I'm going to try to see as many Best Picture nominees as I can before the Oscars come around. Then I'll make mini-reviews for those. And I also was was going to make a separate video for this. I wanted to make a video ranking my uh, top nine most anticipated movies of 2020. But you know what? It's near the end of January. And like, so, and like 
one one film I'm really excited to see is coming out in like in a few weeks from now. So like I figured instead of making a separate video for that, I could just very quickly run down my list of my most anticipated movies of 2020 for you guys. Because I already have two other videos to make before uh, classes start on Tuesday. So I really gotta, you know, get cracking on those. So I'm, I'm just gonna like kill two birds with one stone tonight. My ninth most anticipated movie of 2020 is Tenet. It's, it's a Christopher Nolan movie. What more do I need to say? Uh, number eight is Dune, because Denis Villeneuve is a fantastic director. He was really good with uh, Blade Runner 2049. I really can't wait to see what he does this uh, adaptation of a classic sci-fi novel and a remake of an 80s film. Number seven is A Quiet Place Part 2. Honestly, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but the way that A Quiet Place 1 ends, it just needs a sequel, guys. And it was one of like the biggest horror movie surprises of 2018. Like John Krasinski really nailed directing that movie, and I really can't wait to see what they're going to do next. Black Widow is number six. Finally! Scarlett Johansson gets her own MCU movie, and hopefully th this can be the solo-led uh, Marvel movie that uh, Captain Marvel wasn't. My fifth most, anticip most anticipated movie of, of uh, 2020 is No Time to Die. Finally, another Bond film after uh, four years since the last one. I'm really excited for this. This is Daniel Craig's final outing as Bond, guys. He's my second favorite Bond actor, first being uh, Sean Connery, of course. Like, nobody can top Sean Connery, in my opinion. Uh, number four is Onward, a Pixar movie that's fantasy, a modern fantasy setting with Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. How can I not be excited for that? Uh, the th my third most anticipated movie of 2020 is Birds of Prey and the Fabulous Emancipation of Harley Quinn. Honestly, when I found out this movie was rated R, my excitement for it grew a little bit more, I'm not going to lie. And I love Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. And I, I'm really, the, the cast looks so promising. And I really can't wait to see what direction this DC movie is going in. Second is uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. The MonsterVerse, guys, has so much potential, and I had such a blast with King of the Monsters, and this can hopefully, you know, be like that sort of remake reboot that we've been waiting for a long time. There always been reshoots. I know we haven't gotten a trailer yet, but I'm still very, very optimistic about Godzilla vs. Kong. And last, but certainly not least, my number one most hyped movie of 2020 is Wonder Woman 1984. Wow, for once, there's two DC films... That, that come out this year that I'm more excited for than all the Marvel movies that are coming out for this year. Uh, yeah, well, Gal Gadot is such an amazing actress. Like, no one else can play Wonder Woman except her. And, I and like, Patty Jenkins is in the director's chair again. And I'm really excited for the 80s setting and what this film is going to be doing for DC movies. And, yeah, I'm just very, very excited for it indeed. Whew! There you guys have it. Here's my new setup. I have, uh, let's see if I can angle it for you guys properly. Yeah, that's my TV. Yeah, well, if you look closely, you can see an Avengers poster back there. And the my tape is horrible over there, and they could fall off any second. But you know what? It is it is what it is. But yeah, I'm back in my room. I'm really excited for to be back in classes. And I'm not entirely sure how consistent I'll be able to make videos this semester because I, yeah, after taking my semester off, I really got to hit the ground running on this you know, with, uh, with classes and whatnot, but yeah, I'm, it's not going easy, but I'm still determined to make videos consistently for you guys. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe.